3D printers can make all kinds of things, but did you know they can make flexible things as well? For years, TPU has been the king of flexible filament, and I've used it in tons of projects, but it's not the only floppy filament out there. From flex filaments that bounce, to filaments that foam, and even ones that dissolve, these are five flexible filaments which aren't TPU. And before we begin, I'm just gonna drop this maker coin, into this glass of water, and we'll revisit it at the end of the video. Let's get started. This black filament is PIBA, which stands for polyether block amide, and it's quickly becoming known as the super TPU of the 3D printing world. But what about it has everyone so excited? Well, check this out. Yep. Piba is super bouncy. In fact, comparing it to an identical print in 95A TPU, the difference is staggering. The TPU is flexible, sure, but it doesn't have nearly as much energy return. And that's not all, because Piba has one other trick up its sleeve, its density. This filament is super light. It has one of the lowest densities out of all 3D printing filaments at one gram per centimeter cube. Compare this to TPU at 1.2 gram per centimeter cube, or PLA at 1.24 grams per centimeter cubed, and you can start to see what all the fuss is about, especially in applications where every gram counts. I'm already planning to use this in my future combat robot builds, and I can see it being the perfect alternative to TPU for drones and in other mechanically demanding applications. I will say it's not as soft as some of the TPUs I've tested, but it's definitely flexible enough for most of the things I'm gonna need a flexible filament for. In terms of printing, PIPA prints with much the same settings as TPU. However, I found that layer adhesion was quite low at stock settings, and I had to bump printing temperatures up by about 10 degrees Celsius or so to get a good strong part. I printed all of these tests on the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, not sponsored, and like most other flexible filaments, it's wise to put a layer of glue stick down first on the powder coated PEI bed, unless, you want your prints to stick a little too well. I know it's counterintuitive, but it works. And unfortunately, just like TPU, PIBA is super sensitive to humidity, absorbing moisture from the air, which will ruin your print quality. This is known as being hygroscopic, and it means that you'll need to dry this filament before printing with it, either by using a cheap food dehydrator or using a dedicated filament dryer like this one's from Soval. It's easy enough to do, but a little inconvenient if you need to print something ASAP, but your roll is wet. So I recommend treating PIBA like TPU and storing it in a dry box of desiccant between uses, and you should be fine. But what if you want to print flexible parts that are even less dense than this? Well, you could try this next filament, but it's mostly hot air. No, really, it's foaming TPU. Yes, 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 I know I did say these flexible filaments weren't TPU, but this roll of Flex Air TPU from Sorytech is so far from conventional TPU as you can get. I was honestly pretty skeptical when I first heard about foaming TPU filament. Surely it can't be reliable and it must print terribly, right? Well, was I wrong? On the rolls, this filament looks and feels just like fairly normal TPU, but when heated up and melted out of the hot end, the filament foams up and ends up roughly 50% of the original density. In fact, you can fine tune the hardness of the filament by adjusting print temperature and print speeds. If you want a denser part, you print at a lower temperature, or you can print at a higher temperature to create a soft and light foam that goes all the way down to a 65A sure hardness, which is far lower than you could go with any regular TPU on a standard 3D printer. And it's not even that difficult to 3D print with either. The A1 Mini had zero issues running it with the provided print profiles out of Orca Slicer. I've been 3D printing for over 10 years, but this filament blows my mind. It's soft and stretchy, yet feels resilient and tough to tear. And most amazingly is it prints really cleanly with no major blobs or stringing. Again though, you need to ensure that you dry the heck out of this because it is TPU after all, and TPU loves to suck up that moisture. But you might be wondering, how does it foam? Well, there's no clues on the website, but I've got this handbook on the role of plastic additives from the 70s, and they list a few of the different chemical blowing agents that they could have used. These decompose at a specific temperature just above the melting point of the thermoplastic, releasing nitrogen gas, I believe, and creating a foam as the material cools. I've only just started to incorporate foaming filaments into my printing repertoire, but I'm already thinking of so many uses for it, from custom robot wheels to custom grips to cosplay uses, and 
so much more. But I know it's been on the market for a few years and I'm only just brave enough now to start trying it. So if you've used foaming TPU like this before, then let me know in the comments below what you use it for and if you have any tips to pass on. But this next filament has already been a firm favorite of mine for the past year, PBT. This is glass filled PBT of polybutylene terephthalate from CC3D, a random Chinese filament maker I found on Amazon. And for me, it filled that functional printing gap between PLA and the much harder to print engineering filaments like carbon fiber nylons. This is because PBT is much tougher than PLA and can withstand much higher temperatures, but it prints just as easily on open frame 3D printers, and in my experience, doesn't even require any drying. The reason I wanted to include it in this list is because of its unusual toughness. When you print it thin enough, it's actually very flexible, despite being reinforced with glass fibers. You can bend parts over and over and over again, and they just won't crack or break. Compare this with PLA+, Plus, which can bend, but fails fairly quickly after just a little bit of use. The only downside of PBT that I've found is that it seems to have a bit of a um, non-Newtonian property to it. You know, it's like that slime that you make out of cornstarch and it flows easily at low speeds, but then as soon as you whack it, it goes rock solid and cracks. PBT seems to exhibit similar uh, failures if you hit it hard and fast enough. Now I'm talking really hard, like at the speeds you'd hit it with a combat robot weapon. But if you do that, it properly explodes. And with that weakness in mind, this next filament might just be the solution for you when you need really tough prints that have that little bit of flex, so long as you can keep the damn stuff stuck down to the print bed. This is polypropylene or PP. Polypro is the second most widely used plastic in the world, but it's still relatively unknown when it comes to 3D printing, which is a shame because it has some incredible characteristics. It has a soft, supple feel to it with a good flexibility and it's really tough. You can bend and mangle prints and it just won't fail. Plus it's even less dense than PIBA at around 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter, which makes it an excellent alternative to harder TPUs. But stop, before you rush out and buy a roll of PP, you need to know that this stuff has one major downside. It's a pain in the ass to stick down to the print bed. This is because PP is seriously slippery. It only sticks to itself. That means your print bed also needs to be PP. You can't use a fancy PEI print bed. They're no good here. It won't stick at all. So to print PP, you need to print on PP. And the easiest way of doing that is by coating your print bed with polypropylene packing tape. I found that this kind of tape, which is thicker than the cheap stuff and has a slightly textured surface, works best because the parts stick just enough to work, but it won't weld to it. So you don't have to keep ripping it off and reapplying every print. But also polypropylene has a tendency to warp. So that makes that first layer fairly ugly. In recent developments, however, you can now get powder coated PP print beds, which are designed specifically for printing this stuff reliably, like this one from Prusa. So that might be a good option if you want to do a lot of PP printing. If you can master those issues, then polypropylene is a durable, lightweight plastic that you can rely on for practical prints they need just a little bit of flexibility. But what if you need even less flexibility, but still don't want a rigid part? Then you might want to try this. This is 72D TPU from CC3D. They call this TPU, but I'm doubtful it is, or at least I think it might be mixed with something else because it's like no other TPU I've used. It's really stiff, but pliant, slowly returning to its original shape. And it's tough, really tough. It's like a raw nylon, like a PA6, without the huge warping or print issues associated with that filament. It's easy to print with TPU settings. I actually tested a similar filament, which was a 64D sure hardness TPU last year for a robot chassis, and I was very impressed with the results. It didn't sink the big hits as well as the softer TPUs did, but it was great for the structural components. So this 72D TPU might be fantastic for those internal components that won't take direct hits, but need to constrain parts together without too much flexibility. And hey, if you're still having issues printing with TPU and other challenging filaments, then you can find tons of helpful 3D printing advice in my ebook, The Ultimate Book of 3D Printing Tips and Tricks, which has been updated to include everything you need to know about 3D printing perfectly on modern FDM 3D printers. You can find links to it in the video description below. Oh, you thought foaming filament was the weirdest one on this list? Nah, try flexible filaments 
that literally dissolve in water. This is time mass active by innovative filament company, Time Plast. And let me tell you, these guys make some really weird filaments, but this is their core innovation, a 3D printable filament, which can dissolve at a programmed rate from near instant to a few hours, to days or even weeks. Dissolving filaments aren't all that new. People have been printing with PVA filament for years, which can work as a soluble support structure or matrix that you dissolve away after printing. And there's various solvents that can dissolve a whole range of other filaments like HIPS dissolves in limonene, ABS in acetone, and PVB in isopropyl alcohol. But none of those are as friendly or as safe as good old H2O, and none are as flexible either. Printing with time mass filaments is challenging to say the least because they dissolve in water. They're basically a sponge for moisture and need to be dried extensively before you even attempt to print with them. And the company doesn't ship them in vacuum sealed bags for environmental reasons. So expect to do a lot of drying right out of the box. I had this roll in the dryer for two days straight at the recommended temperatures before printing the test maker coin and it still boils and spits angrily out of the hot end. But if you're able to avoid crossing perimeters, the actual print is clean enough, and they do actually recommend a 0.8 millimeter nozzle anyway, not the finer detail that I usually print on a 0.4. The resulting print looks and feels like solidified PVA glue, and even has the same kind of vinegary smell, but it's a lot more flexible and quite tough. And when you're done with it, you can chuck it into water and it'll rapidly dissolve. In fact, Let's check in with the maker coin we threw into water at the start of this video. Now this hasn't been in here for too long, but it's already very uh, slimy. <laughs> and this top surface is already starting to dissolve and wick away into that water. This is just standard tap water and it's getting cloudy. And as this maker coin dissolves, it will dissolve fully into this glass of water. Now you might be wondering, is this actually safe to pour down the sink once it's fully dissolved? Well, the company says yes. In fact, they have a metric boatload of random filaments, from glow filament to fish food filament to photovoltaic filament, apparently. I don't know, it all seems a little bit far-fetched to me, but I've linked their website along with all the other filaments in this list in the video description below, along with my ebook if you'd like to learn more. So it's been about five hours since I filmed and look at this, it's almost completely dissolved into the, into the water. The top surface where it's floating isn't dissolved, but everything underneath, it's just like a goo. It's really disgusting. So yeah, um, it's almost completely gone. And um, little miss, she's still there. Well, she ate food and went back. She deserves only the best. Don't you?